switching to Blender might seem like the next logical step. It is free, packed with features, and adored by a huge community of 3D artists. But as many newcomers quickly realize, it is not exactly a smooth transition. For anyone moving over to Maya, Cinema 4D, SketchUp, or Max, Blender often feels less like a new tool and more like a new way of working. And honestly, this is what makes the switch so tough for some. Blender isn't built to mimic other programs. It has its own logic and quirks, and adapting to those can be frustrating at first. But the good news, you are not alone in this. Have you ever wasted hours searching for an asset that you know exists but you can't just find? Maybe you don't remember the file name, or worse, you are stuck opening dozens of files hoping to stumble upon the right one. Managing a growing asset library can quickly spiral out of control. Files scattered across folders, cryptic naming conventions, and the constant frustration of switching between software just to preview a single file. It is exhausting, time-consuming, and downright inefficient. Blueberry is an AI-driven asset management tool that makes managing your assets quick and easy. With the built-in 3D preview engine, you can manage 3D assets directly in the browser, so no need to launch separate software, and it supports over 100 3D file formats like Max, Maya, Blender, and much more. Also, there is a multi-model AI search, which lets you find assets not just through text, but also using images or a vague description, such as rusted texture or low poly house. On top of that, you may also appreciate features like automated tagging, version control, and large file transfer, as well as seamless integration with all major 3D software. So click the link in the description and check out Blueberry AI right now. The first reason for a lot of people to move over to Blender is of course the price, or the lack of one I should say. With Blender, there are no subscriptions or renewal fees, which is definitely a relief if you have been tied to pricey subscriptions with software such as Cinema 4D, Maya, Max, or SketchUp. Instead of stabbing your wallet to death for your 3D software every year, you can focus on upgrading your gear or investing in other parts of your workflow. But it is not just saving money. Blender combines so much into one package. Modeling, sculpting, animating, rendering, you name it. It is all there. It also has a GeoNodes approach for procedural workflows and having both EV and cycles, meaning you can go from quick previews to polished renders without jumping over to another program. And Blender also gives you more control. It is open source, so you can tweak the interface add custom scripts, or use add-ons created by the community to build a setup that works for you. And speaking of the community, it is one of Blender's biggest strengths, because you're gonna find lots of tutorials, tips, and people who've been exactly where you are. Talking about Blender being good and easy might feel like overselling it at this point. Because if you are new, you will eventually find Blender odd compared to your 3D software and you will need to adapt if you are switching over. If you are coming from Cinema 4D, you are probably being spoiled by its user-friendly interface because almost everything is click and go and you will rarely have to hunt for tools. In addition, Maya might feel more dense, but it is still structured in a way that keeps things accessible for experienced users. And the same goes for Max. Everything is organized in menus. Also, if you noticed, it never changed over decades at this point. Blender, on the other hand, feels different. Not necessarily in a bad way, but it doesn't give you the same thing. Tools are often tucked away in menus or tied to shortcuts, and the layout isn't always intuitive at first glance. SketchUp users, for example, face an entirely different challenge in addition to the user interface, which would be the user experience. Take snapping, for example, which is simple in SketchUp, and I guess it is due to its CAD nature, but this feels kind of clunky in Blender, I mean for SketchUp users. Instead of simply aligning objects, you are toggling options and setting up parameters. It is not that Blender's snapping tools don't work, 
they just require more steps to get the same results. Also, I don't have to remind you that Blender users love shortcuts, or Blender itself made them love the shortcuts. And if you're moving over from Cinema 4D or SketchUp, where tools are more like menus driven, Blender's reliance on the keyboard can feel overwhelming. Some of Maya and Max users might be already familiar with hotkeys, but even then, you might find Blender's approach more complicated and you will need more time to adapt to. But once you master a few essentials, your projects will flow effortlessly. Repetitive actions like aligning objects or extruding faces become muscle memory, making modeling surprisingly quick. And when you're stuck, the F3 search bar is your safety net, because from there, you can find anything. And if you are really still struggling, Blender's industry compatible key map might help you work more smoothly. The assumption aligns with shortcuts with software like Maya, Max, and so on, which can make the transition less jarring. But since most tutorials assume you are using Blender's default layout, it is usually worth learning the native shortcuts if you can do that. There is also the fact that Blender is packed with features but they are not always easy to find. In fact, many of its most useful tools aren't obvious at first. Take the Node Wrangler add-on for example. It simplifies working with materials in ways that can save you hours of work. But unless someone tells you about it, you will never probably know it exists. Another example is Geometry Nodes, which allows for procedural modeling and animation. It is incredibly versatile, but comes with a steep learning curve especially if you're not familiar with the node-based workflow. As one Blender user put it perfectly, Blender doesn't have a lot of fancy plugins, like Cinema 4D. Instead, you learn geometry nodes and build things yourself. When it comes to modeling workflow, for example, Blender and Cinema 4D take noticeably different approaches. In Cinema 4D, modeling feels non-destructive by default. You can apply modifiers like bevels, extrudes, or deformers and adjust their parameters at any time without permanently altering the geometry. This makes iterating on a model much easier, so you are free to experiment without worrying about undoing a mistake. And that's why I would say Cinema 4D is still the best choice for motion graphics, since this procedure approach gives you the ability to generate some very cool effects facts that you often see in ads and product showcases. Blender's workflow, however, leans more towards a destructive approach. When you extrude or bevel in Blender, those changes are applied directly to the geometry, while Blender's modifier stack offers some non-destructive capabilities. Many common modeling tasks require modeling steps to preserve flexibility. In addition, it does support procedural modeling and it is possible to do motion graphics, but I wouldn't call it the best when it comes to that. But even when you have discovered these tools that require you to adjust in the way you approach these tasks. And this brings us to one of the biggest challenges in Blender, rethinking your workflow. One of the hardest things about switching over to Blender is letting go of the old habits. If you're coming from Cinema 4D, Maya or even SketchUp, your muscle memory is going to be working against you, especially at first, because you will instinctively reach for tools or shortcuts that just don't exist in Blender, or they do exist, but work completely differently. My advice is, treat Blender as its own thing. Simply put, trying to force it to behave like the software you always used will only slow you down. And the sooner you embrace Blender, especially its unique approach, the quicker it will start making sense. Rendering is another area where you can feel a bit lost. Blender offers two main render engines, Cycles and Eevee. Cycles is designed for realism, using ray tracing to create lifelike lighting and reflections. Eevee, on the other hand, is more about speed providing real-time previews, which are great for stylized projects, like the movie flow that we have seen recently. If you're coming from Maya or Cinema 4D, think of Cycles as Blender's version of Arnold or Redshift, and the same goes if you are a Mac user, which has Arnold for example, and this render engine is all about accuracy and realism, but it can be slow unless you've got a powerful machine. 
so if you are a Redshift user, you might also find cycles slightly less optimized, but still capable of producing high quality results. Eevee, on the other hand, is more like a real-time game engine. It is great for quick previews and concept work, similar to what you might find with SketchUp's default render engine in a faster but less detailed manner. Unlike SketchUp, Eevee can handle complex lighting and materials, though it requires more manual tweaking to get things looking just right. Now, if you're still here and you're thinking about making a switch or making a jump over to Blender, you will quickly realize that the hardest part of switching to Blender is to keep using it. This is the case because when you are already skilled in another 3D software, it is kind of frustrating to feel like a beginner all over again. A lot of users describe this phase as the point where they almost give up, but pushing through this frustration is gonna be worth it, trust me. I would say the hardest thing is the feeling that you're wasting time, especially if you have clients or you have tight deadlines, or if you are impatient in general. Despite these challenges, I would say Blender is worth every bit of effort that you put into it. It is not just about cost saving, though it is a huge plus. Some artists even say they will switch over to Blender even if it is a paid software. As someone from Reddit said, I switched from Cinema 4D to Blender around 3 or 4 years ago, and it was the best decision I have ever made. The community and the software is so good. I think people love to talk about how it is free. But really, even if Blender was paid, I will still say switching is a good decision. The good thing is that Blender is constantly improving with regular updates often influenced by community input, and these updates keep the software growing and updating and becoming better over the years, helping it evolve to meet industry and community needs. So whether you are working on solo or collaborative projects with teams, I completely believe that Blender offers a range of tools that can support all of that. Add to that its open source nature and the sky is the limit. Everything is doable at absolutely zero cost. And the great thing is, you can save that money that you would have paid for your 3D software to buy add-ons, assets, and so on that can help you push your work even further. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.